Hey guys, it's Noah and welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be a little bit of a different video and I want to answer a very frequent question that I get is how do you find good or how do you find trustworthy or how do you find profitable wholesale suppliers for your drop shipping business? And I'm going to be answering a question that I got inside my Facebook group. The link for that, by the way, is in the description if you want to join. So the quote goes as follows. Every time I think I've found a good wholesale supplier with a hot niche and I get accepted, I see the wholesale prices and discover that either they're not competitive at all or they are, but the shipping costs are astronomical, so of course I can't offer competitive prices for their items. It happens with almost every wholesale supplier I found. So how is it really possible to work with wholesale suppliers if it's more competitive than the retail suppliers? This is a really good question and it's one that I've struggled with for my own business. The first thing that I just wanna preface this video by saying is that there really aren't any bad suppliers. What I mean by that is yes, you have suppliers that are posing as wholesale suppliers and they're not really wholesale suppliers or you might have some businesses that have terrible business practices. Those are bad suppliers. However, once you have a general wholesale supplier or a general distributor or a business that is a legitimate wholesale supplier, they have good shipping, good handling times, and the prices maybe are not that great, there are always ways to work around that. It could either be by selling on different platforms or it could be by maybe sending in your own labels. There's usually a workaround to make a supplier a really good supplier. For example, I work with a supplier and I was trying to sell their products on Amazon and the profit margins were terrible because my competitors were selling it for a lot less. I started selling those products on Walmart recently and since other sellers are not selling it there, I'm able to go ahead and I'm able to dominate those listings and I'm able to make a good profit margin on those items. So that's the first thing you wanna consider when you are looking at a wholesale supplier. You wanna take a look at their policies, see where they let you sell. If they only let you sell on Amazon and eBay, then those are the two marketplaces that you wanna check. However, if they don't have any restrictions, then you wanna see if you can sell their products on Walmart, if you could potentially sell their products on eBay, because there might be a market there that is untapped by your competitors. The other two things that you wanna consider is number one, where you are finding your suppliers. This has been the biggest thing in my business. Originally, when I started wholesale dropshipping, I bought Salehu, I bought Worldwide Brands, I looked into wholesale B2B, I looked into all of these different sites, and it wasn't really until I found my own suppliers that my business took off. There are two ways that you can operate this business. Well, there are more than two ways, but the two most common ones are that, number one, you can do this by operating on volume and smaller margins. So you can get an account with a large distributor that is very competitive and you can go ahead and you can sell a lot of products, but usually you're gonna be operating on very thin margins. The way that I have chosen to run my business is I work with smaller suppliers, I work with smaller wholesalers, importers, manufacturers, and I do a lot less volume. However, my goal is to make sure that my margins are bigger. And this all comes down to how you find your suppliers. If you're finding your suppliers by using directories or by using sources that other people have access to, then those suppliers are going to be somewhat saturated. Take Salehu, for example, or Inventory Source or Worldwide Brands. Those sources are being viewed by thousands of people. Every time someone pays for Salehu, then the value of Salehu diminishes because that's another set of eyes that is now browsing through that directory that is going to start working with those suppliers. That is personally why I recommend not buying these directories and not going ahead and using those suppliers because the way that I built my business is by going ahead and I've been finding my own suppliers. So that obviously begs the question, how do you find your own suppliers? I've shared a couple of ways on the channel and I do have plans to make more videos, but the biggest way for me is by attending trade shows and you obviously can't do it now, but I used to attend trade shows in person and I have found 90% of my suppliers by attending trade shows. And it's also been a great way to go ahead and meet the suppliers because it's not just calling them up. It's also not just sending them an email, but you get to talk to the suppliers in person. You get to build that relationship as well as you get to see the products in person. You get to physically hold them. And this way, you know that there are quality products. You get to go ahead and exchange business cards. And it's really a great first point of contact to create wholesale accounts. The other way that I found suppliers is number one, by using Google. If you go ahead and you do different Google searches, you play around with the keywords, you try different markets, different niches, you can find suppliers that are not going to be in directories that other people have not found. I found suppliers through Google. I've also found suppliers by looking at my competitors. So I've gone ahead and I've taken a look at my competitors who I know are selling already a certain type of item, but I see that they're selling other items that I don't have access to. 
I then go ahead and I start looking around in my market. I start doing some Google searches and I find the supplier that then makes that item. And I then get an account with that supplier. A couple of other ways is that you can go ahead and you can ask your suppliers who their competitors are. Now you're not just going to go ahead and outright ask them, Oh, who are your competitors? You can say, Hey, I saw this item by a certain other supplier. Do you know if maybe they got it from the same source? And then they can say their names. There are ways that you can go ahead and you can sort of nuance the conversation or you can shape the conversation into a way where your suppliers start telling you who their competitors are. Another way is that you can look at who your suppliers or you can look at where your suppliers are going in terms of trade shows. So I will always take a look at where my suppliers are going and which trade shows they are attending because that means they're paying for a booth at these trade shows. And if it's worth it for them to go to these trade shows to find new business, then it might be worth it for me to look at these trade shows because maybe other suppliers are doing the same thing and it might be worth my time to go to these trade shows. And lastly, this brings in the third point about finding good wholesale suppliers, and that is what type of supplier are they? This is going to play a huge part in what type of business are you? Personally, like I said, I like to focus on larger margins and my volume is not as high as someone who is selling millions of dollars, but is operating on thinner margins. I personally like to target smaller suppliers as well as smaller brands. And there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that you're more likely to get brand exclusivity and you're more likely to be able to sell on other markets. If you were to go ahead and you were to contact a distributor, if you were to go ahead and contact a larger business, they're not going to give you brand exclusivity. If you contact a business that's doing millions of dollars, they're going to be working with bigger sellers than you are. So it's not really worth it for you to go ahead and contact these brands and say, Hey, can I be the exclusive on Amazon or Walmart or eBay? As well as a lot of these brands, what they'll do is, is they'll restrict the number of sellers that are selling on a marketplace. So if you go to a distributor and you ask them if you can start selling on Amazon, some of them might say, no, we already have too many sellers on Amazon. You can only sell on eBay or another platform by going and focusing on smaller brands. I'm able to number one, get more likely to get brand exclusivity, as well as I'm able to get access to marketplaces before they close out. I started working with a supplier about two years ago and I started selling their products on eBay. And now new people who go in and open wholesale accounts, this brand does not let them sell on eBay because this brand says that they have too many sellers selling their products on eBay. The other reason why I love contacting brands and starting to work with brands, especially brands that do not necessarily have dropship programs is because it's easier to build a relationship with a huge, huge part of my business is focusing on brands that don't have a dropship program. And then I contact them and I start forming this relationship. I'm able to get better discounts. I'm able to negotiate everything. I'm able to go ahead and build up that long-term relationship that I look for when establishing a wholesale account. That's really not something that you can do with a distributor. Normally with a distributor or a larger business, you have a point of contact who is going to be your sales rep, who is going to be your account manager. And there's only so much of a relationship that you can build up with them rather than building up a relationship with the general company. So with smaller brands, I, this way I get to talk to the CEO, I get to talk to the owners and I know them by name. I know the people at the company and in return, they know me. Now that's not to say that you cannot work with larger companies or larger distributors. Like I said, it's all about your business plan. I do work with some larger companies. However, those do not make up the bulk of my business because a lot of those companies are number one, they're either dominated by people who buy in bulk. They're dominated by people who are larger businesses than I am. And it's not really worth my time to go ahead and try competing with them and try opening accounts or trying to find profitable items with them. Rather, I focus on the smaller suppliers where I have a bigger foothold, where I have more influence and where I have a better chance of finding profitable items. There are many different ways to operate this business. I've only named two of them. Like I said, my business is smaller volume, but larger margin. And then you can go ahead and operate your business in a different way, but that's how I go ahead. And that's how I find profitable suppliers that meet that criteria that fit into that mold for my business. And that's how I built my wholesale dropshipping business. I know that this has kind of been a little bit of a different video. It's kind of been like a chit chat video where I just talk to the camera. But I just wanted to answer this question that I received inside of my Facebook group. So I hope that you guys were able to enjoy it. I hope that it was informative and helpful. And if it was, be sure to go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for new videos that come out weekly, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.